Hello English 9, it's Miss Long. And with this video, we are beginning another exciting unit in English 9, this one on Romeo and Juliet. So you have just finished the definition essay, and you did a fabulous job of thinking through some very abstract and concept, complex concepts. So really good work with that. We have two units remaining in our course until the days of summer. You'll have Romeo and Juliet that we're starting now, and then one additional unit on the personal essay, the This I Believe essay, which is a fabulous way to end the year. So that's where we're headed. So I do want to just point out that with unit six just ending, late work is typically available for an additional week. In this case, that week is running awfully close to spring break. So I have done you the favor of making that final date for unit six on Sunday, March 27th. That is after spring break. So you're going to need to keep up with Unit 7, but you've got a little bit of an extra cushion in there to try to finish up Unit 6 if you got behind. So Merry Early Christmas or something like that. So I um, just want to walk you through Romeo and Juliet. Uh, I will tell you that this is a play that almost all ninth graders read. There's a reason for that. I'm not going to tell you what that reason is. I bet you can figure it out. But this is almost a rite of passage for many ninth graders. It's something that almost everyone in our culture has encountered at one time or another. There's a reason that Shakespeare is so highly regarded. The story is not that unusual. In fact, he borrowed it from several people. But it's the way that he expresses what is a universal feeling for us that is remembered best. And when I was thinking about that universal feeling, I was remembering a movie called The Dead Poets Society. Uh, Robin Williams, the late Robin Williams, was the, the teacher in it who motivated boys by getting them to think about things that were universal and the fact that they are alive now. So there's a fun scene here where he reminds us that we are alive now, we won't always be. But as we are alive now, the things that we are experiencing, those feelings, those thoughts, those relationships, are the same things people have been feeling for hundreds, thousands, hundreds of thousands of years. And there's something very universal about this young love that's portrayed in Romeo and Juliet. Now, this is a tragedy. This is a, That means that it has a bad ending. There are two households fighting, the Montagues and the Capulets, and there's just no way that a love between those two households can possibly end well. So know that it's a tragedy, but it is a very beautifully written tragedy. So as you're looking through this session, these um, this can be a long session, seven days, but that gives you time to do some kind of exploration on the topics of Shakespeare and then actually get into the language and really grapple with that language. So these are the, the assignments that I've listed here. You have a new work ethic bonus I'll talk about in just a moment, a weekly journal, a discussion, a web quest, and then you'll be reading the first act, the prologue in the first act of Romeo and Juliet. So to start, I just wanted to mention some changes I'm making in this work ethic. I, there were some of you I found that were doing the schedule for some of the weeks in the session, but not all of the weeks. And it's a good habit whether you do it for all of the weeks in the session or not. I set kind of a high goal, but I think I'd like to scaffold that to a level where if you do the template, the weekly template that plans your week for uh, one week of the, of the unit, that is a step in the right direction. So I decided, yeah, I should go ahead and honor that with extra credit. So it's a week-by-week -week basis. Each week you do it, you'll get 3% of the points for that week. So I'd like to challenge you to take this into account and complete this. The other thing I did is I added a second option, which is to actually track your hours and how you're spending your time, and then at the end of the week reflect on that. This is what dieters do. They write down everything they eat. And then they get a real sense of where their temptations lie, what times they're most likely to, to eat junk food. And in the same way, if you can keep track of your hours, you'll probably find where your, your time traps are, where you're tending to get off. So that one would be completed at the end of the session. The regular template for planning would be completed at the beginning of the session. Either way, I'm giving you the option to get organized and work on those organizational skills that are so critical to your success in this class and in all classes, really. Take a view from over here now. So you're, as you dive into this unit, the first thing I want to have you do is write a weekly journal on the topic of the unattainable goal. As our play begins, you have the Montagues and the Capulets, these two very powerful families that are fighting with each other, huge brawl in the streets, and the prince gets involved and threatens everybody with their lives. 
In the meantime, young Romeo Montague is beside himself with love for a woman who does not love him back. He is not able to woo her. She does not know that he exists, and she decides she's going to be a nun anyway. So he's just lovesick with this love for this woman that he can't ever have. So the question I put to you is, what unattainable goal have you had in your life where you really, really, really wanted something and you were not able to get it? Maybe it was a competition that you didn't win. Maybe it was a relationship with someone and you wanted to have a deeper relationship with them and they were not able to reciprocate in that relationship. Maybe it was a school goal that you had for yourself. Some unattainable goal. Write about how that made you feel, what you experienced, what you learned from it. This is all setting you up for thinking about how Romeo feels in Act 1. And then to further prepare you for reading Romeo and Juliet, we'll do a pre-reading discussion on what you think you already know about Romeo and Juliet, why we read it, what life is like as teenagers, what love is like, what's a tragedy, what's tragic love. So these are all questions that you can respond to in a PEA format linked here, and then you'll respond to other students. Now, as you get into this literature, you'll realize it's part of a genre. You look at genre in writing. There's different types of editorial writing, and there's the definition essay you just finished, and then there's a personal essay. There's different types of writing, and there's different types of literature, too. There's poetry, there's prose, there's fiction, there's nonfiction, and in this case, we are looking at drama. And really, drama is meant to be performed and not read. Uh, so take that into account. There are some stage directions in your play. You're supposed to be picturing this as it's happening on stage. As you get into it, you also need to know something about the, the background that's going to make this more understandable. So we have a fairly major web quest as part of our work this week. That web quest will let you explore who Shakespeare the man was, this dude, from 400 years ago. Now, just to put this in context, when Shakespeare was born, it had been less than 100 years before that um, Christopher Columbus had discovered America. This was a time when there were no revolutions or democracies. Spain was beginning to take control of the New World. There was conflict between Spain and England. Uh, Queen Elizabeth was on the throne in England, and by the time Shakespeare died, it was King James. Lots of turmoil, but royalty was very important. And the royal patronage made a huge difference for Shakespeare. So you're going to learn a little bit about what life was like in that time period um, using this webcast, or this web quest. So you'll take a look at actually what's going to be a separate folder. If you come down to the list of assignments, you've got, see here, a separate blue folder that contains this web quest. So you don't, don't, you don't want to get off track as you click on it you'll have a whole separate list of pages about Shakespeare, marriage, food, language, things like this, and you'll have a, a, a template that you're going to fill out, and that is here. It's a web quest document, and you'll fill out your answers based on what you find. So you can still navigate back and forth. You can get into this whole folder, or you can navigate back to our regular session. So don't let that throw you, but it is a folder in our session. And that's a hundred points. So it's important that you get this background that really is going to make Romeo and Juliet more enjoyable for you. So then your next step as you're kind of front loading this reading experience is to get a little bit more background about the play specifically and to use everything you can to understand this language. I won't lie, this is going to be a reading challenge for you, but it's a good challenge because challenges come with benefits and rewards. They make us think, they make us grow. So I would encourage you to check out this article with some reading tips on how to get the most out of Romeo and Juliet. Things like not looking at details. Know what you're looking for before you go in. Spend a lot of time getting that summary down so the language makes sense. I'd also throw out to you that it may work for you to watch, watch the play performed. People use a lot of expression when they speak, and that's not necessarily going to be reflected in the words. So even as a baby, you understood your parents' expression when you didn't understand their words. So you might try this clip, see how that works for you. We do have an abridged version to read, but if you want to get the full text and read with an audio recording, I certainly would support that as well. So that's an option for you. Um, in getting background about the play, there's a couple of fun, light-hearted videos that are moderately sacrilegious on this. 
but these basically put the video put the story into context in a modern day type context they're kind of fun and then you can read a synopsis of that here a synopsis is a summary you can read a summary of the play here and know what you're looking for then you'll be able to figure out the language so you also might want to look down at the bottom of the page there's Romeo and Juliet character chart it will help you keep track of these two feuding families and who's who because that is something with you know with the unfamiliar names and the unfamiliar language you want to know who's a Montague and who's a Capulet and why it is they don't like each other and the people that are in the middle a friar is like a priest the friar is like the religious figure who's trying to unite these families so make sure that you print this out I'd recommend that you keep that with you as you read and then you'll be ready to read so you're going to be using uh, a an abridged version here that's a PDF version at the bottom of this page again you're welcome to use an audio recording and a full text if you prefer and there are plenty of copies you can find on YouTube and all over the web um, but you don't have to you can read, read the abridged version now we have read the prologue which is the introduction that kind of gives the summary of the whole play for people who are watching and act one when you've read that when you get to the end ask yourself hey how do I feel like oh my gosh I have no idea what happened click here you're going to play a fun little game that with the review cards and you'll understand this is where Verona Italy is the setting you'll understand who the characters are what happened and if you're pretty confident when you read it that you understand this is not going to end well but this is going you understand what's going on then you can click here and take a quiz and this quiz is not for a grade it's just for you to kind of understand um, kind of what make sure that you've really understood what's happening solidify your own knowledge before you go on and that is basically it. At the end of our session, you should be able to answer each of these questions here. And if you can't, then maybe you need to go back and reread the play or revisit certain assignments, the web quest, whatever. So that's it. And that will take us up to spring break. When we get back from spring break, we will do the final three sessions of Romeo and Juliet. That will be Acts 2 through 5. Take a quiz on that, do a project on that. There's lots more coming there. Have a fantastic week and do not hesitate to contact me if you're having any questions about this. Have a good week.